So the Invisibles are a group of spirit mentors and guides and allies and the whole fleet that I've been working with since a child. And I feel like some of them have come in through different initiations throughout my life. And so they've been training me on how to be really sensitive and receptive to them to the point that now I channel them. But it's taken a lot of years for me to create that level of trust and in my own abilities. So the questions that they ask is, they encourage questions that are either for yourself, for humanity, or for the planet. And so we have, you had a, an hour and 11 minutes, um, and we're going to go into that. So there should definitely be time for everyone to at least get one, or maybe maybe we can get one each, or a few will get a couple questions in. That is, that is the guidelines. And so if anyone has a question right now, you're welcome to, or I can ask the first question just to like soften the waters. Yeah? Okay. Because we're so close in the Shasta, I feel like I just want to create space for any insight on this land and on this area, just any messages that they have from, from the beings that support this land, however they wish to answer that. Why not? <laughs> and also, I have this awkward coughing thing that happens, so don't mind me. It's part of my process. <laughs> okay. The messages from Mount Shasta. So clear, I don't have to cough. This is amazing. Sorry, just take a moment. Never had never not had to cough. Oh, there's one. to support you in understanding why this place on the planet is crucial to the development of the continuity needed for people to harness their gifts. So on this planet, there are many places that hold a very consistent energy of depth and reassurance that your core spiritual nature you're designed to connect with the greater essence above and below and within. Has a place to be held in that desire and design effortlessly. And these are places on the planet that we call, or you may know as, as power places. We also call them auric line late places. <laughs> They're like saying something like, Auric language deposit spots. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And as we weave our desires to grow and thrive with the infinite nature that is our birthright, you will realize that these power places will call in you and individuals when you're ready to release an expectation that you are the one anchoring your design, anchoring your full capacity. Because there are places in the planet that cannot necessarily host or hold what you are creating for yourself. But they can do other things because every place on the planet has a design, a brilliant, brilliant, impeccable design and the people that are drawn to it are drawn to it to embody or learn or support that design, right? So what is the design specifically of this location around Mount Shasta in this, in this area? Well, one of the things that is important for you to know is that the design has shifted 
in the last 200,000 years. Just as many places on the planet's design shift as a new invocation is needed. Almost as though it births itself. It becomes older, it matures, just as you mature. From your maidenhood into your motherhood, into your chrome, and then embody all of that at once. So this land is currently in its motherhood, if you were to see it as that. Because there are still qualities of nurturing that people come to this land for. So it holds that ability to nurture your spirit and your soul. And especially beings that have come from, have incarnated from more celestial dimensions and realms and orbits and essences. This is a motherland that comes to support and hold and allow you to feel held in what is home to you in a core soul level. Some people won't be called to this land because they're resisting aspects of being flexible to the union of the divine within them. Okay. There's different ways that that comes out, but we're going to stop there. And I guess the last part is just a prayer from the planet. quite sure. Uh, we'll just see how it comes out. This has to do with um, the collective shift we're in. The largeness of the transition where the new is literally emerging through certain family members and we're standing side by side with those who are a little, uh, you know, on, we're all in different timing here. And definitely knowing that the new and the old are going to be side by side for a minute. And with the planetary shifts coming in right now, it seems the poles are being slightly changing positions and mm -hmm. all of this, this next transitional movement that we're in. What would be the best way is just to be bridging. Um, bridging... My, my own answers are coming yeah. <laughs> that I already know. So but I, want, I want to like, Goth, I, I want to open the space just for the question rather than me answering it. Um, but just the best 
antidote for the individual and the collective families to make these transitions when there is so much shaking in the world. And when the, when the, I mean, I, I see us coming together and, and clan make clans and tribes for the safety and creating structures and infrastructures where we can build these mm -hmm. ways and have spaces where the others from the old system can come in when they're ready. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, how, how to, with all of this shift and change and movement and truly like old world up against new world happening, mm -hmm. what are the best ways to really navigate this transition as, as an individual? I'm just open for yeah. something other than what I might already just do <laughs> them, <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 So, you know, any guidance in ways of supporting the great transition that's happening upon the planet on an internal level and a collective level? Yeah, internal why not? Level? So, uh, yeah, I'm not very sure. Right now. Let's try it. that um, the duration of this transmission we are in this beautiful golden age mm -hmm. holding us and above us and going down deep into the moment earth beneath us thank you if people are okay with that mm -hmm. yeah your breath for so long, okay? Especially if you know that all you need to do to reach air is to put your head above the water, okay? We see that that is what's happening on a collective level right now on the planet. There are many beings that are holding their breath. And only in that time of forgetfulness do they forget that this discomfort that they are feeling, that they feel is, is theirs, is existence, is just how it is. Not being able to source their full needs from their environment, right? That's the forgetting. That's what has been happening. But it's been happening in a very interesting way because it is designed with a safety mechanism, right? And so, there will be a time, and there is a time, where many beings are getting to that point where they're realizing and remembering through that primal instinct just where the air is, just where what they really are needing to nurture themselves is. And it's so close, right? These two worlds, as you speak of, are so close. In fact, they are almost the same world, the same world that holds the water that may be beneath or holds, holds what is supporting the internal shifts. So what is happening as this breath is being brought into the lungs of the collective again? That deep understanding and realization that you can actually be more alive than you really ever believed. That there is more life force available to you, but what do you do with it? And this is more what we're interested in addressing. Because as these shifts are coming from the forgetting into the embodying truth, wisdom, so comes life force. Because the forgetting is disconnecting 
with certain qualities of life force that are birthright for every individual plant, animal, creature on this planet, right? And so what do you do as this life force is returning into your body? Because as this life force enters into your body, it pushes out aspects, beliefs, systems that you've been holding. Because the life force itself is a purificational right that is going to reshift and shake your life so that whatever is not anchored to a true foundation of impeccable trust and divine within you will shake and crumble. So what's more important is to realize how to support people in the shaking and crumbling that is inevitable. Because that it can be the most challenging aspect of shifting into this culture, into this new way of having more life force, which is the simple way of seeing it. So to have compassion when people around you are making choices that may seem that they are out of alignment with what you believe in, right? But underneath that, holding space for them to also remember where the life force is and to know that if people are having challenges themselves, if they seem like they're going in circles and circles and circles, in some cases you can lend a hand to pull them out. But in many cases, it's that perpetual circle, it's that perpetual dissatisfying existence on a core level that can hit that safety switch. Enough is enough. And when that enough is enough has been tickled, right? That is when evolution jump starts itself. So what can you do? What we are seeing specifically to share right now is that, oh, they're showing me this image they're showing me this image of water, like this, and they're also saying something about like an amoeba or something, but that... A what? Amoeba or an amoeba? Anipi? Amoeba or... An I don't amoeba, know. Amoeba, like a symbol. Of amoeba. Thing. Maybe. But that there's, that there's like, a, there's something about working with water that actually will be like, kind of like a Jedi way of like, of supporting the shift. So, so being really clear on like, how you work with water in your own home, but also like in the collective water, like what are you putting in, like how do you pray for this, for the city waters? How do you, because there's something in, like they're showing me how, but, and they're also showing me that there is something in the water that is, that might be also more city water, but there is something that is like blocking or resisting, but it's not something that's not imper impermeable or to our intentions and our actions. So. That's a really simple thing you're saying. It's like how do we, how we work with water is also how we are supporting the medicine being embodied in something that is, it's kind of, yeah, I think like stealthy medicine women's water magic work. Yeah, makes sense. Is there anything else that can do? I'm also hearing something like teaching children how to work with water starting with that, like, and how to support the next generation, no, because water, I feel like, is such a clear, easy beginner available, like, it's, no matter what, it's, like, consistency or sickness, it's everywhere, right, it's something that's available everywhere, hopefully, even if it's just in the moisture, like, in the morning, so, there's something about water in that. perspective on humanity's genetic evolution going from like our past into the future. Ooh, yeah. Hmm. 
making me think of, I had this mirror gazing journey once where I just gazed into the, into the mirror and went through all these different lives. And I actually got to this one point when I was witnessing this life where all of a sudden I could see, this is my OC thing to say too, but I could see the moment where like there was, like we're humans where we didn't have like it's like that definitive, like how you can see kind of like this is where I, I start and then work and the air ends. Like it was, it was all energetic. Like it was like this almost like soft blending. It's like we blended into our surroundings, like on an energetic level. And I saw that and I was like, wow, oh my gosh, this is where we started. And then all of a sudden I saw this like, like this manipulation. And the manipulation when I saw, I could see it in the bone structure. I saw like, and like, and I could see that it was like, it, mani it was like this weird manipulation of like how to like form, put form and like, and all like, it felt like trapping to be honest. Like it, it felt like if somebody was to take a luminous being and be like, and now you're in a box and that box is this thing. <laughs> but it was really, it was really intense for me. And then there was a blackout, like. If anyone's been um, mirror gazing, sometimes you get to those blackout moments where all of a sudden it's like, and this is something that I can't access. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's, for whatever reason, it's like either something's put a block on it, especially with Egypt work. Like I've done Egypt work where all of a sudden they're like, no, you can't go there. And I'm like, yeah. right? And it's like the blackout. <laughs> yeah. So that's my own perspective. Mm -hmm. Dying is not an accident. Okay. There are aspects on this planet that have they just made. <laughs> it's interesting, they're like reaching like these block points and it's like they're pretty good. Mm. In understanding your genetic evolution, in understanding what has occurred to the body in order to be able to harness such thoughts, to be able to refine existence on the material plane to such a minute detail that it almost seems that you are creating existence, right? This can be a dilemma, this can be beautiful, this can be a gift, and this can be a curse. What we feel like sharing is that your body has undergone a series of developments that haven't always been for the best interests of the planet. There is something related to the spine. And the, they're saying like, is, is spinal cortex something or is, it, or is that two different things? There's the, ne the neocortex is the front part of the yeah. brain for the higher thinking and emotional intelligence. Oh, okay. And then, of yeah, course, the spinal cord, it's where the, it's, uh, the brain attaches to the spine. Okay, there's something like that. Yeah. Okay. 
This meeting point has a lot more going for it than many beings can even comprehend. We like to think of this as the storehouse of consciousness itself. Because it is the point where the mammalian body, where the body that supports its growth evolution meets the mind, meets the one that communicates. And in that point is where keys to your evolution are also living. But in order to activate that, there has been manipulation on a cellular level to detach. And this may be controversial, but this is how we've seen it. But there are minute strands that, for lack of a better word, weave or construct a very complex pattern of synapses and correlations between information and action. Right? And there has been, through very advanced mechanisms, a detaching on two to four of these very minute cords. Okay. How this happened is complex. It started on a vibrational level. Okay. So it used vibrational technology to actually, we don't know if we have quite the word in English. I said animals. So it used this technology to send the vibration, the exact vibration, into these cords of connection and create through sti stimu stimulation and simulation. This is very complex, but the easiest way we can share it is that it, in order to actually disengage those connecting points, and when we say disengage, they're still there, okay? Every human being, maybe a few don't. But they're still there, but that through a series of sending vibrational essences of fear, of distortion, and things like that, there was, <laughs> there, it's so, like, what they're trying to share is, like, really complex. I'm trying to, like, filter it down. I'm going to use my own words. They're showing me how in order to like disengage those connecting points, and this might have to do with not using all our brain, like the whole 20% or whatever that is, though I think we could use more in this room, um, that they sent like vibrations that, that on a mammalian level started programming the body to see that using that was actually going to kill you or like, like these weird fear tactics so, because that's that's what happens with DNA stuff too, is that the DNA holds holds the story of like, well, how do I exist safely and thrive on this planet, right? And so, at different times in our life, or in different times in our ancestors' life, if there's something that has occurred, and this is something I've learned from just doing my D, like working with DNA reprogramming techniques, but if there's something that has been experienced generally traumatic by an ancestor the ancestor begins to create, a, like, well, how do I create, how do I make sure that I created programs so that nobody will experience this again, right? But at the same time, those programs, they get outdated. So it might be, okay, this program that my ancestor told me is that it's unsafe to really connect with men or something, or to have a family, you know, if, if her family was, was destroyed, you know, things like that. And so then that program comes in and it's only, it's only unlocked and activated when some sort of, when something similar happens in your life that almost stimulates that, that experience on a genetic level. So, and that's when it sparks into action. And maybe you guys have felt those moments where all of a sudden, like, I am like, I am reacting right now. Like I was, I'm so open. All of a sudden this one situation happens and I go into uh, something that I found something was beyond me. So what they're kind of showing me is that on a, like, and this is, a, I don't understand how this got to such a lot, like, oh, they're telling me it's not, it's not, I'm going to let them speak, actually. <coughs> Specifically, Western Europeans have been affected by this. A certain Euro-Asia epidemics spread through. Some in the Middle East. There are 
are a few places in Hungary, actually. And this is just, just, just icing. This is not necessarily something you fully need to look into unless you want. But there was some, some places in Hungary where people were in an underground, we don't have quite the word for it, but they were able to preserve what was going on. And there are places around the planet where different indigenous cultures were able to actually preserve those connection points, okay? Generally by going underground in some ways. And so not all beings are disconnected. And that doesn't mean that the connection points can't be revived again. This is what's important. So how do you revive these connection points? Well, because we said there are four to six in some individuals, it may not happen overnight. It's a process. Perhaps you understand these moments we're talking about, when those connection points have finally been connected through ritual, through ceremony, through certain instances where your divine help and consort has come in to reestablish and to, oh, they're showing me like, literally showing me the image of like, change the, like who's steering your ship, like these moments where it's like a whole new order of, I was gonna say, which is one more thing and then we'll go on to the next question. <coughs> so an exercise that we have one of them, there are many, to starting to bridge any of these connection points if that's the case in your body, in your anatomy. Hmm. Interesting. They're really into like the holding your breath thing right now. They're showing me how actually holding your breath, and you know that point when you're holding your breath and then it's like that a buildup happens, and it's right before you're like, okay, I need air. They're showing me that in that buildup, it actually speaks on a mammalian level. So it speaks to that part of you that's like, okay, I need to like, like it could be like fight, flight, fear, like or depending on how you use it, but they're saying that that actual point is a really great point to do reprogramming work. So when you can reach that, and there's different ways of doing it, like those finding ways to get to that point of, I mean, sometimes people, I'm not saying like jump off a cliff, but like even just, if you were to get really close, like something that would invoke a mammalian response without actually like hurting yourself. <laughs> um, but they're saying that there's something in that moment that you can actually, if you can bring your consciousness into that moment, you can actually start to shift whatever those, those disconnecting patterns are. It, it's kind of complex, like what they're the greater, but that's, I'm gonna be doing, going into that. I feel like trusting each, people feel called to do, you'll find your own way of working with that. But they're also saying that there's way, I'm like, they're showing me this image of people coming and gathering and doing these, um, these gatherings of cool, <laughs> they're doing like these gatherings of people coming and like doing this breath work, like holding the breath, but then having the environment, like having um, the environment, at, like having sounds, like I'm kind of seeing like, like the creating this really like high vibrational environment. So with like, I see like crystal bowls and sounds, like really full of high vibrational sound so that when you, and there's something else I don't totally, I can't totally see right now. I don't, I don't feel like we share it yet, but, but that when people reach into that point, they can also allow those sounds to kind of like, like purify whatever the block is while you're in that point. 